Okay, so in this video, we're going to solve for a friction problem where we have some weight, you know, on a inclined surface and some force P pushing it up a surface. So what we want to find is that force P required to push the block up this plane. Okay, so we're given a couple things. We're told the plane's at, at, at an angle 20 degrees. We're told this mu or the coefficient of friction is 0.40 and the weight of the block is 100 pounds. So our approach here is we're gonna first draw the, the free body diagram and really what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a free body diagram of you know the point right where this thing intersects and in, in, uh, the center of mass acts through the, the, uh, the surface. And we're gonna find the components of forces and then we're gonna go and apply our equations of equilibrium. To do that, we're gonna to need to use our friction formula where the force of friction equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So, hey, let's get started. So let's draw that free body diagram of this point where all the forces are gonna intersect here. So we have our weight acting down. We have our force P acting along the plane. We have friction force resisting the movement. And we're also going to have a normal force that is normal to the surface of the plane. Okay, so if the plane is, you know, in this direction here, where, you know, this direction is, you know, 20 degrees to horizontal, that's what we're going to start with. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, figure out what our uh, local axis or local coordinate system is going to be. And what I like to do on problems like this is to align that local axis right up with the surface of the plane. So if we have our x and our y direction here, I'm gonna say that, well, x is rotated 20 degrees from horizontal. Okay, so that's gonna help us a little bit, but it's also gonna make a little bit of, of work in some ways. Well, the good news is our friction force is lined up with the x-axis. Our p-force here is lined up with the x-axis. Our normal force is lined up with the y-axis, but you'll notice w's kinda of lined up with neither of them. So what that's gonna end up with is it, it's gonna mean that we're gonna have two components. We're gonna have a, a wx component and a wy component where the weight acts through. Number two, we're gonna find our components. So the components that we have to deal with here are wx and wy. And, and the big question here is, well, if we have 20 degrees on the horizontal, where's 20 degrees uh, over here? And, and hopefully it's pretty obvious, but this is gonna be 20 degrees. And we can go through the, the, uh, the geometry for that, but you know, if we look at maybe alternate angles here, this is 20, right? So, and then, so what does that mean? Well, this is gonna be 70, you know, and this one's gonna be 20 again. So um, hopefully you can see that and it makes some sense. And once we've identified that angle, well now we can write equations for wx. Well wx is gonna be equal to w times the sine of 20. wy is going to be w times the cosine of 20. And since we know those, why don't we go ahead and solve them, okay? When we solve for wx, we get 34.20 pounds. And when we solve for wy, we get 93.97 pounds. You know, that makes a little bit of sense because most of the force here is vertical because this angle, it's not, it's, it's a pretty shallow angle. So next we're gonna come in and we're gonna apply our equations of equilibrium, right? And I wanna start with some of the forces in the y direction because there's fewer unknowns, right? We know our normal force has to equal our, our weight acting down in this case. So we have a minus wy, right? So if up is positive, we have minus wy, um, and then plus n equals zero. So what does that give us? Well, it tells us that n is going to equal wy. So if we add wy to both sides, which means n is going to equal, what do we have? 93.97 pounds. Okay, so that's good. So we, we figured out this normal force. And, and you know the next step might be just to say, well, what's the sum of the forces in the x direction? Right, so when we say the sum of the forces in the x direction, well, we know we have you know, plus p, minus wx minus the friction force which is opposing movement so the force of friction has to equal zero well here we still have two unknowns we still have p which is unknown and we have this force of friction but if you'll remember we have to use this equation up here to figure out what the force of friction is so if we write in, in the force of friction this is going to equal mu times n which equals you know 0 0.4 times 93.97 pounds Okay, so what that equals is when I solve it, I get 37.59 pounds. 
for the friction force, all right? So once we know this friction force, now we've, we've basically come to the point where we know Wx, we know the friction force, so we can solve for P directly. So let's do that. So P is going to equal essentially Wx plus FF. So Wx we got was 34.20 pounds, and FF, or the friction force, is 37.59 pounds, when we add those together, what we get is we need a force of 71.9 pounds to push this thing up the plane. Okay, so to do that, what we had to do is we, you know, had to figure out our free body diagram. We had to come in and figure out each of these different components with the angles, right? So don't forget those angles and the geometry in there. And then once we had our our components, we could apply these equations of equilibrium and just start solving. So first we solved in the y direction, then the friction force, then the x direction. So hope this helps. And next, we're going to make it a little bit more complicated. So um, if you want to, if you want to take a look at the next video, we'll go there. So until next time, keep moving onward and upward. Talk to you soon.